Coming up on this episode of the RunningRestaurants.com podcast, I interview Taraj Barman, CEO and co-founder of Up and Go, which is a contactless payment company for restaurants that helps solve several key issues with customer payment and checkout. We have an interesting talk. Check it out. All right. Welcome to the RunningRestaurants.com podcast, where we bring you the tips, tools, and techniques you need to make your restaurant more profitable and successful. I'm your host, Jamie Oikel, and today we've got a great episode with you featuring Taraj Barman, co-founder of Up & Go. Uh, let's start with a little bit about your company. Tell me what you guys are doing. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jamie. Well, <clears throat> our company provides contactless payments at restaurants. Uh, we've been around for three and a half years we're really the first company that I know of to integrate with point of sale systems and provide a QR code that didn't require an app that you could just scan, pull up your check and pay. Yeah. L listen, uh, it's so funny that, you know, we talk about this and we're going to go out to your website in a little bit and you, you know, you, you sort of simplified what you guys do right there. Uh, but um, what, as we get into the story, we'll figure out, you know, why it's so important that frustration uh, towards the end of the check. Is that, is that the derivation of the, the company? I mean, uh, where, 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 did, where did it start and how did you guys get to where you are? Well, the number one problem I was trying to solve, because I go out, I live in a metropolitan area here in downtown San Diego, and I, I go out with friends all the time, and I, and I have for a long time, is really splitting the check. Um, mm. That's where I thought, you know, you, you go to a dinner or meal, and everything's fun, and you're enjoying your friends' companies, and then the check comes, and all of a sudden, you have to start talking dollars with your friends. And sometimes, you know, that gets uncomfortable. So I thought, listen, there's got to be a better way. And my vision was that people could just pick what they ordered and pay for their own thing. And just naturally that flew into, you know, that fed into that concept of paying the check. And so um, anyway, there's a lot of, there's a lot of technology and up and go to help make splitting the check really easy and, and fair. Yeah. Why is splitting the check with friends such a, such a uncomfortable process? Uh, <laughs> it's weird before that. It's like, okay, you pay 20. No, you pay 10, but I, I got the thing, but I didn't, I didn't get the alcohol. Let's split it equally. Well, you got the $20 thing. I got the $5 thing. <laughs> and uh, so, so it, it can get awkward. Um, all right. So derivation was splitting with the check. Um, simple as, as scanning, uh, scanning the, uh, the QR code, which now, of course, for a little while that was confusing, but now everybody of course has a phone and you know, has figured that piece of it out. So, uh, how has the journey been over, over three and a half years, much more simple today than it was? Well, you know, my original plan was I had a three-year plan, which was the 10, 100, 1000 plan, which was to get into 10 restaurants by the end of year one and a hundred by end of year two and a thousand by end of year three. And, and, uh, we pretty much tracked that, which is pretty impressive. Um, and, you know, I'm very proud of our team and, you know, we just continue to, you know, refine our product. Um, we're thinking about, you know, new, new and unique features we can add. We recently added 3d secure fraud protection, which I'm pretty sure we're the only, uh, service that lets you pay with your phone at a table that has 3D secure fraud protection. So, you know, we're always looking to kind of have the premium product and, you know, make sure we have technologies that are really valuable to the restaurants and the guests. Talk about the, um, uh, some, a piece of the founding story or, or how you guys got started. One of the first impl implementations of how you learned how to use a restaurant. I think you have a restaurant back yeah. on yourself. What do you mm -hmm. got? Well, by the way, it's, I, I often forget about this myself, but I, I was actually sort of born because of a restaurant because uh, my dad, back in the seventies, my dad had a restaurant and my mom wandered in to get a job as a waitress. And, you know, one thing led to another. That's and funny. so, uh, <laughs> in fact, when I was a kid, you know, I used to go, I used to wash dishes and do weird things like fry, uh, fry pickles on the grill. Um, and, uh, you know, I still remember getting in trouble for clearing a plate and like eating, eating the leftover of someone's fries. My mom told me that was not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so when it comes to, you know, wanting to build this, um, I felt that you don't want to build something in a vacuum. You want to build something with a client in mind. And so I had recently met Matt through some local art activities. Uh, we're both art aficionados associated with the local uh, mm -hmm. modern art museum here. And I approached Matt and I said, listen, I have this idea to create a, you know, a new way to split the check and I want to build it in a real restaurant, you know, to work for a restaurant. And I said, you know, if it works in your restaurant, it's going to work in other restaurants. And, you know, part of me, I, I was just really committed to, you know, wanting a good product. And I always thought in the back of my mind, listen, you know, even though we had the 10, 100, 1000 plan, I said, listen, if, if this thing only works in Starlight, it's still a cool thing that works at Starlight, you know? And so I was just really driven by that mission to make it, you know, a great way to pay. <clears throat> it turns out that Starlight used Aloha. Um, so that was really fortuitous for us because, well, it's very difficult to get an Aloha partnership, but I think um, the folks at NCR, you know, shared our values with what we wanted to do. 
Um, and they had previously and currently still have a product that's that's kind of similar. So really, we're both um, you know innovators in that area. And um, you know, uh, integrating with NCR with Aloha, that, you know, that's that's a big, a tall hill to climb. And um, we were just up for the challenge. You know, like it goes back to that saying that why did we go to the moon? You know, we didn't go to the moon because it was easy. We went because it was hard. And so I was you know definitely motivated by that challenge of getting something to work well with Aloha. Yeah, we'll talk about that for a second because a lot of restaurants um, will be interested in in this or or, or like or, or similar technologies, and they'll think it's easy easy to integrate. So you guys in- integrate with Aloha. Is there other stuff you integrate with? Can you still use your stuff with some other al- alternatives? What are the options? Well, we also integrate with uh, Micros, um, so thirty seven hundred, and um, you know we're just uh, introducing our Symphony integration. One of the things that's special about Up and Go is that we we directly integrate um, with the POS. So a lot of other third-party companies, um, well, the, you know, there's a very famous, very well-known successful company that does is sort of like middleware provider. And so they connect to something like eight to 10 different point of sale systems. And then they have an API. So you can kind of connect through them and connect to the POS. And I think a lot of, at least my competitors look at that and they think, okay, cool, you know, We'll just be in a bunch of POSs. But for me, it was a lot more in, like basically quality was took precedence over the quantity. You know, I wanted to have the very best integrate, you know, payment service for Aloha and the very best payment service for Micros. And yeah, so right now we have two instead of 10, but those are the best. You know, if you're on Micros, you're on Aloha, the, the very best you can have is up and go. That's true. Okay. Well, let, let me let me do this, uh, and we'll poke around your site a little bit. You can show us a, a couple of things that uh, are going on there. I I, I think I, I started just by having the the, the basic uh, how it works screen up, and you've already talked about this. But uh, what 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 else do they need to know about what we're looking at right here? Mm-hmm. Well, what's going on here is <clears throat> um, we integrate with the point of sale system. So with your existing printers, they're going to print a QR code at the bottom. Um, you don't have to change any hardware at all. You don't need any new hardware at all. We don't even install up and there's like no concept of up and go being installed on your POS. You know, we're literally just using the built-in APIs on those native platforms. So the check prints out, you drop it at the table, guest scans, pulls up the check. And then we, um, we actually, so we do another thing that's very, very unique, which is that we can actually put the payment right into your POS. So they're basically two, when it comes to submitting a payment to a point of sale system, you basically have two options. One option is you essentially um, send a, a, you know, of course encrypted and, you know, we're um, a PCI level one certified service provider. So everything we do has security as like a top priority. Um, But there, there's a mechanism where you can use the built-in credit card gateway of the POS and you could submit the card that way. Then for the restaurant, it's it's so seamless, right? Like if they need to adjust a transaction or whatever, they can do everything for their POS. Um, but a lot of restaurants are actually moving away from this concept of having credit card numbers in their POS and using the gateway built into their POS because they want to re- they want to limit their PCI scope. So a lot of restaurants, especially when they move to EMV, because of these POS, legacy POS, they cannot really process EMV locally. So they all are the point to point encryption. They go to a they're basically connecting to an above store payment gateway. So, and then when they tell the POS a check is paid, they're creating what's called a tender. So a tender is really just like an account. Like for example, you could say this check was paid with up and go, you know, that would be a tender instead of saying this check was paid with MasterCard 4444. Um, so one of the, so that's definitely like a real differentiator for up and go. And that's something that comes from the native one on, you know, one at a time integration with the POS because those aggregators um, I mean, frankly, those ag- aggregators don't even have access, like on Aloha, they don't have like the authority from uh, NCR to to use the uh, built-in gateway the way we do. So um, yeah, so whether, and we support both, you know, so whether the restaurant wants the payment in their POS gateway directly, or they want it in an above store gateway, like let's say, you know, Freedom Pay, who's a new partner of ours, or, you know, let's say a first data gateway, um, uh, even, you know, Braintree, we, we're plugged into many of them. Okay. Yeah, it's stuff that uh, gets uh, really, uh, really, really tech heavy uh, pr- pretty quickly. But it has, has, so you want it to be done fast and, and right. And uh, quick, quick question. Well, let me, let me. Actually, it's probably, it's probably gonna be answered as we scan down here. So let's, let's kind of come down. That's gonna be a video stuff. Um, 
All right. Well, I, instead of me asking a question, and this is kind of the, the not, not that we look to do a sales pitch at all, but like these are the <laughs> these are like some of the legit benefits when when uh, of right. your stuff. So yeah, kind of walk through what you got here. Sure. Um, well, by the way, the first thing that's actually not listed here is health and safety, right? And that's kind of what led to a lot of our growth in 2020 as a response to COVID. Um, so obviously, the fewer things people are touching, the better. But um, as for you know, besides that. There's a lot of ways that up and up and go is going to help your business. I mean, the first thing we see here is is turning the tables. So I encourage people when there's a check dropped at their table, you know, at any restaurant, start a start a timer, you know, on your phone and see how long it is from when that check is dropped until you can leave. And it's it, it's so much longer than you think. You know, we did a case study at one of our restaurant sites and we looked at the people who paid with up and go and the people who didn't pay with up and go. And the people who paid with up and go, they had an average dwell time at a table of 41 minutes. And the people who didn't pay with go up and go was, you know, 61 minutes. And in fact, the up and go people paid $40 on average instead of 38. So <clears throat> basically if you compare, you know, 41 minutes to 61 minutes, that's, that's saving about 33% of the time. But where that number becomes really interesting is if you think about what that does to your throughput, it actually doubles it, right? It's not a third because for example, take a two hour period, you know, if each party takes an hour, you can serve two parties at you know, in two hours at one table. But if each party takes 40 minutes, then you can serve three parties in the same two hours, right? And if you compare three parties to two parties, that's a 50% boost to your revenue. So all of a sudden it's, if you use up and go, it's basically like your restaurant's getting 50% larger, uh, you know, for just a small monthly fee. I'm um, obviously you. Oh, sorry. Well, no. <laughs> I'm really for, before you even go, before you even go further, I, I want to one. I, I just want to echo ex what you just talked about. And we, you know, we had a meal uh, a week, uh, a few weeks ago at, at a restaurant, um, outside dining after my daughter plays softball after a softball game. So it's already late. Um, you know, we probably sat down at uh, eight thirty ish, whatever. But uh, anyway, we finished, and now so she, you know, she still has to, you know, go home, shower, all that stuff that you got to do when you're when you're when you're a student. And they drop, they drop, they drop the check. And sa same thing you just, you just echoed. You think it's going to be quick, but that process can lag and lag and lag. And, and so we're, we're, we're newly attuned to this, but my daughter can recently drive. So we were like, oh shoot, go ahead and leave. Right. You know, normally they, they, she obviously can't do that, but we're like, go ahead and leave. You have your car head out. But, but so in, in essence, um, we wasted, you know, 20 minutes waiting for that whole cycle to happen, you know, that whole cycle mm -hmm. to happen instead of if they hit, you know, instead of if uh, we could have just, you know, first thing she hit us with a QR code, boom, I could have paid credit card, we, you know, we could and we could have walked out, which on a late night dinner, we were like itching to go. And when you have that itchy feeling as a customer, it's like at the restaurant, you want to avoid your customer feeling itchy, especially with that last, last experience they feel. So I'm, I'm probably echoing stuff you guys talk about there all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing that I love about these benefits is that they 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 regard experiences that are very universal. I mean, everybody eats at restaurants. Everybody knows what a pain it is to wait for your check, right? Everybody can relate to this problem. So it's a really big problem to solve, you know, for a lot of people. Um, so in addition to helping the restaurants business, you know, it's it's improving the guest experience, right? People yeah. are going to walk away with a better feeling. Last thing you want is like a one star Yelp review because someone waited half an hour to pay their check, right? So. Yeah. This kind of picks up and prevents those sort of potholes, if you will, in your service from it's happening. Like, let let me give you my money <laughs> so I can leave. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, there are times where I'm like, I mean, I, I'm unfortunately, I guess, I'm too honest. But there are times where I'm like, geez, let me just walk out of this place. But of course, I don't do that. Of course not. Of course. Not. And <laughs> the, the the sell more is interesting. Um, and then um, and 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 you may have found that it that it leads to, to 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 more even even more tips. What are you finding on on that on that on that that portion of it? So I have this whole philosophy, you know, when it comes to selling more is that I, I believe, you know, what is a server? Um, you know, a server is someone is basically, in my opinion, they should be two things. One, you know, one is a salesperson, right? Because they're selling. And the other thing is a service provider. You know, they need to ensure that people have a great experience. But there's sort of this third job that every restaurant makes them play, which is essentially, you know, cashier or, you know, accounts receivable person. Like, I don't think a server's job should be to go collect money, right? Um, so if you have a system like up and go, you know, up and go another, another way that I sometimes characterize our, our up and go is sort of like having an invisible employee. So you have this invisible employee that's your cashier, it's going around, it's getting everyone's payments. And so if a server is not busy, you know, swiping five credit cards for a split check, what could that server be doing instead? Well, they could be serving, they could be selling drinks at one table, they could be making some people's experience, you know, better at another table, right? So 
I really just think servers should focus on service and selling and they shouldn't, you know, they shouldn't be an accountant basically. That's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree there. And, and you already kind of echoed this next one where, yeah, if, if people, people will negatively go on and leave a review. If imagine if they had a great experience, but it just, it took too long to pay and you, you don't want that to happen. And this is, you've, you've had feedback where people are like, Oh shoot, it's so easy. I just, I just want to go back to that place because they made my checkout easy. That's interesting. Yeah, um, actually uh, I'll tell you like one of, one of my favorite stories from business school is um, I, you took like a marketing psychology class and they use this example of like, you know, s- someone uh, getting a colonoscopy and they're like the two most painful parts, you know, of a colonoscopy are when you go in and when you go out, not the middle. And so, you know, people, it's the kind of the psychology is like, um, people tend to remember the beginning and the end of things, mm-hmm. right? And so, you know, that you have this fabulous meal, right? Great experience. And if the end is bad, you know, if it's hard to pay, that can just ruin everything. And they're going to walk away and that's what they're going to remember. And, you know, you don't want that if you're running a restaurant. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent agree. All right, let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, well, okay, you talked about you talked about split the uh, split the check, text a check, direct a check. What do you got here? Yeah, well, we, you know, we have a lot a lot of different benefits, you know, and we just put a few up here. Um, you know, split the check. Obviously, that's something that we really excel at. We provide a few different ways to split the check, whether it's you know picking your items, um, putting in a fraction, putting in a dollar amount. You know, and we keep track of all of that. Um, we introduced, um, one of the things we introduced last year, which was a real big hit was, uh, text to check. And actually after we released it, pretty much every one of our competitors followed suit. So, um, but we did it, you know, we were the first to market it with that. And the mm-hmm. idea was very simple. You know, you get someone calling in an order, you rather than take their credit card number, you take their phone number, you put the phone number in the POS again, no third party hardware. And, you know, we, we see that and we shoot out a text um, with a link to pay your check. And it's the same payment experience as if you're in the restaurant. Then when you arrive, you know, you're, it's very clear that you've already paid, you know, the receipts printed out before you get there. So they can just hand over your order instead of, you know, you having to disrupt service. You know, most restaurants don't have a dedicated server just standing around waiting for people to come and pay for their pickup orders, right? So you're always like, waiting for someone to, you know, finish serving a table or it's, it's never good. Right. And so paying in advance is awesome. Um, the direct to check, I mean, that shouldn't even be a feature, but some of our competitors make, make you enter the check number, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, so that was just saying that when you scan a check on up and go, it goes straight to the check. That check. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I really like the text idea. Uh, as, as we're all find ourselves ordering more often, uh, re, you know, remotely. And then, yeah, that, that pay process, when you get to the location can be, can be, can be not fun. Uh, sliding down, uh, talk about these things and then we'll jump back out. Sure. Use cases. So, I mean, the bread and butter, up and goes bread and butter is pay at the table. You know, that's what we invented when, when I was starting the company, I, I thought, look, you know, if, if you go to, um, if you go to a quick service restaurant or, you know, fast food or, or fast casual pay at the counter, it's not really a delay there. Check splitting is not so much of an issue. So we were re- re- really, what I saw is the underserved area was paying at the table. So that that's our bread and butter. Um, you know, the next most popular use case is text to check, which really took off um, kind of before text to check. We, we, and uh, you know, our first sort of response to COVID um, it wasn't even us. It was like Russ just started doing it was curbside pickup. So, mm-hmm. It basically saves one round trip for a server. If if someone arrives with you know to pick up their food, the server comes out with the the check with the code on it, and then the, the guests can pay at the table, show their confirmation screen to the server, and they can go in without up and go. They're going back to the terminal, then they're coming back out again. They're getting a signature, then they're going back in again. You know they're going to have to t- you know write in the tip. Um, and then we do have uh, you know we've recently come out with some uh, features for the more counter service, quick service. So we have an ability where there's a a QR code dedicated to, uh, let's say, a terminal, so you can walk up and scan that and pull up the whatever check is on that terminal. Uh, you know, drive through, same thing. Um, you can do some line busting. I mean, people waste so much time just sitting in their car in a drive through. Why not? Why should you know? Why don't give them the power to pay before they get to the window? You know. Good. Yeah, lots, lots of stuff. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out just back to us and just talk about as as we start to close. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff there. Obviously, you guys are sounds like you're innovating all the time. What's uh, what's coming next? Where are you guys heading? Oh yeah, you know, good question. Um, so we have a lot of different areas of expansion that you know we're looking at. I mean, 
you know, like I said, we recently added 3D secure techno payment technology. Um, we have, uh, we currently have order at the table and online ordering both in beta. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have the ability where we're using your own phone, you can add to your order, start a new order, order online. Um, and these are running at a few restaurants uh, so far. And, um, you know, we are, we're working on integrating more point of sale systems. You know, I hope that we'll add one or maybe two more this year. Um, and then we have, you know, we have some things I can't talk about that are some really special things we're building <laughs> out. Uh, you know, by the end of the year, I, I think we're going to have one or two features that really surprise people. Um, yeah, you have to with tech, you got to come up with surprises. You got to keep, you got to keep moving. Cause, uh, it's not, it's not, not slowing down. So as we, uh, officially get to, to the wrap up stage, send them where you want website, social download stuff, or what do you got? Well, fortunately, there's no downloads here. Uh, no app needed, but just go to upandgo.com, U-P-N-G-O.com. Um, learn about our company. There's a contact form, you know, reach out. You want to get up and go in your restaurant, we'll get you up and going. Yeah, simple, simple as that, right? I'm just, I'm typing it, <laughs> typing it in right now in my notes. I, uh, so yeah, I, per perfect stuff. Good stuff to check out. I, I encourage you to, I encourage folks to do it. I, I know it makes the, the, the experience a lot better. So, all right, folks, that was Taraj Barman of Up and Go. You can find them on the web at upandgo.com, uh, which is literally upngo.com. Uh, for more great restaurant marketing, service operations, tech tips, stay tuned to us here at runningrestaurants.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie.